maybe I can begin on this. Uh, there are many products which are going out of patent. Uh, so a lot of clinical development work which is taking place as far as that pipeline is coming in. Uh, there is a lot of work which has been done on biosimilars, which is a big, big opportunity. A lot of work which is happening by the generic industry in that space. And there will be a lot of work which have will also happen in the value added space. And this is uh, uh, because of the pandemic that, and then there is a lot of work which is happening in the repurposed drug because large manufacturing capacity exists around the world. And many of the repurposed drug uh, use uh, because they are safe, they have been used uh, as far as COVID pandemic is concerned. Uh, so we will see a lot of change and the concept of repurposed drug perhaps uh, emerged during the pandemic time. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can add to what Sudarshan has said, David. Um, I think one of the things that you will see is that um, the kind of, there'll be fewer of the classical kind of retail or community pharmacy generics coming to the market and more generic biosimilar value added type products coming to specialty uh, kind of therapy areas. And this is because of course, this is where the uh, expiries are, are taking place. Now, the benefit here is potentially huge in terms of patient access because often these specialty therapies are more expensive uh, because there are fewer patients and so therefore there's a kind of higher unit cost there. So the difference that our industry can make is, is absolutely massive. Um, and we saw that with biosimilars, um, what kind of a difference that now, you know, it's expected over the next five years that biosimilars will have an equivalent effect in Europe to generic uh, launches in terms of, uh, let's say, better access, lower costs, et cetera. Um, the challenge I think that we face is not so much that we can help patients, we certainly can do so. I think that governments will struggle in this area to understand and to manage this process. So we have seen with biosimilars how difficult it has been to convince governments to stimulate competition in biosimilars, including in Europe, which invented biosimilars, right? So we claim we're so far ahead, but it took us many, many years in Europe to get where we were because as Sudarshan said, we had to convince governments to take a patient-centric approach to biosimilars to get them to be accepted, to get that competition in the market without that patient-centric benefit share during approach, we were not successful at bringing competition. We needed governments to change their mindset to a patient-centric approach, as, as Sudarshan has stated earlier. I think looking forward, whether it's for specialty generics or value-added medicines, it's a little bit the same thing. To bring competition to these markets is more complex, and you need to bring a patient-centric, benefit-sharing type approach. Looking at our industry as kind of a service provider to healthcare to enable that competition and to bring huge, huge benefits. Just think of value-added medicines, what we could do to better manage chronic diseases and, and the efficiency gains and the improvements for patients in that space. Um, the difficulty is we need to change the mindsets of, of governments from seeing generics just as a, as a savings tool per unit, how many X percentage savings can I get per unit on this, to looking at us as, as a service provider to healthcare, to improving access and, and improving the treatment of patients overall. I can just, um, yes, I, I, sorry, Jonathan, go ahead. Just a point, because uh, to build on what Adrian had said, one of the challenges for the industry when you're looking at complex generics or biosimilars and the difficulty of the pathway that Adrian described is the risk profile for those products increases dramatically. You've got much smaller patient populations that you need to build out and the, the, the clinical trial, the, the data for bringing that product to the market. You have fewer patients to sell into and in a system that isn't predictable about how you're actually gonna enter that market. And that gets very complicated in the U.S. perspective when you're talking about biosimilars and the uncertainty around the patenting system there. So I think it is a challenge for our industry as we look forward about what type of products and what the, the portfolio of the companies will be as more and more of the products in the marketplace, especially when you're looking at in terms of dollar terms and value, are going to be uh, taken up by these complex products. And so how the industry is going to work with those products coming, uh, losing their exclusivity will be a challenge, but it's one that the government's gonna to have to address because that's where they're spending more and more of their healthcare resources on those complex products. Uh, Dave, yes, just I... to build on this point is uh, what Adrian and Jonathan have just talked about. It will be great to look at HIV story uh, from 2000 to 2019. At that time, no one could have imagined uh, 
the difference the generic industry will make. In fact, uh, if you look at the data, there are 15 million lives which have been saved in the period 2000 to 2019. 51% uh, reduction in fatalities. Uh, and the role of patient centricity is so fundamental that we have made difference to the healthcare outcomes. And by similar, again, uh, that will be the role this industry will be playing as highlighted by Adrian.